Hello and welcome to my next video. This is going to be a product review of a Broadway Limited 2102 modernized uh, Santa Fe type locomotive. So this is a steam locomotive that has uh, Paragon 2 sound and synchronized puffing smoke. So we'll uh, see how it sounds, check out the uh, smoke in it. We'll also look at the pulling power of the engine, which I was really surprised at how much this engine could pull. And so I'll show you that. And then we'll talk about the details of the engine and how it lines up uh, all the way to the specific road number of the actual Santa Fe uh, 210 Because With that, let's go ahead and start checking out this uh, product review of uh, Broadway Limited 210 Okay, so now on with the unboxing. Uh, the engine is well packed, comes with its standard uh, inserts. Uh, that does have a couple extra stacks that you can swap in and out, as well as a magnetic wand and some traction tires, uh, what you may need. Uh, I had to sort of let gravity take the engine uh, out of the box for me. And uh, my engine actually came with the front of the uh, boiler uh, popped off. Uh, it actually went back on real easy and, and simple uh, and stuff. So uh, if that happens, just very carefully snap it back into place. Make sure your piping lines up uh, correctly. And uh, once I spent about a minute doing that, everything was good to go with the engine. All right, we'll go ahead and check out the performance of the engine first. Uh, straight out of the box, the engine is very smooth. Uh, at speed step one, there was a, a little bit of uh, hesitation, uh, and it's not quite smooth. Uh, it does creep forward at uh, 1.7 scale miles an hour, uh, but to get it run uh, so the drivers appeared nice and smooth and fluid, had to take it up to about speed step four, and even then it still was crawling forward at 3.5 scale miles an hour, so that's real good. Uh, at its top speed, the engine will uh, definitely fly around your layout. The top speed for this engine when I tested it was uh, 92 scale miles an hour, which is actually faster than the actual uh, 210 2s. The engine tracked out very well uh, through all of my layout. Uh, all the switches on my layout again are Insofrog switches, and I noticed uh, no hesitation in the engine at all as it uh, went through those switches. Uh, it was nice and smooth forwards and backwards. On this locomotive, the drawbar that connects the tender to the locomotive has two different holes in it. And while the manual, I, I couldn't find a spot that actually recommended minimum radius for each one, I found that on my layout, which is 26 inch minimum radius, uh, the engine was a little bit smoother with the, in the, uh, the further hole out which put a little bit more distance or separation between the tender and the locomotive. And so you can see here it going through the double crossover and then my ladder tracks without any issue, uh, both forwards and backwards. And this engine does come equipped with a smoke unit that has synchronized puffing smoke, but for most of this review I actually have the smoke unit turned off. And you can do that by either hitting F7 on your DCC system, or there's a physical switch on the underside of the locomotive and you can just switch that to off. Now one thing you do want to be careful of is don't ever run your uh, smoke unit uh, without actually having smoke fluid in there or you could burn up the smoke unit. Now, earlier I alluded to the pulling power of this engine. And I, I knew it was going to be a good puller because the engine is very heavy, but I didn't realize how great of a puller this thing actually was going to be. I started out testing it with about 30 cars, and it was easily pulling those 30 cars around. And so I kept increasing, got up to 50 cars, it was easily pulling 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. I actually got up to 100 cars with this uh, engine pulling it around, and it was still pulling and it could have pulled more. But I was just having a lot of trouble with my uh, cars, that train length, staying uh, on the tracks and everything, it would, would pull great up until about 90 and then I just had all kinds of uh, derail problems and so I never really got up uh, above 100 but it actually still had some pull and power left. And just to clarify, the derails that I mentioned were actually occurring with uh, my train cars, not the engine. The engine comes equipped with a Paragon 2 sound system and so we'll go ahead and check out those sounds now as uh, we go ahead and look at the details uh, on the engine itself.
The engine also has several other uh, background sounds or miscellaneous sounds, uh, but these are similar to uh, what a lot of the other BLI steam engines have, so I won't step through all of them here. It's not real noticeable in the photo here, but uh, out of the 10 drive wheels, uh, only two of them actually have traction tires, uh, and it's the rear two. And BLI does include a couple extra traction tires with the locomotive. One of the nice details about this engine is that it comes with three different stacks uh, that you can install. The uh, three ring stack on the far left, and then a smoke deflector stack uh, both in the up and down positions. The three ring stacks would be uh, more common on flat terrain, uh, and the uh, smoke deflectors were in areas that had uh, tunnels and snow sheds and things like that where the exhaust uh, coming up would actually uh, do damage to the uh, structure above the tracks. Now one thing with these in the uh, their manual, BLI does not actually tell you how to remove these and so I wanted to show you that they actually don't screw into place or anything uh, it's just a uh, friction hold and so just kinda grab it and wiggle it back and forth um, be careful of the number boards on the side you may actually want to grab it uh, on the front and rear of the stack rather than on the sides uh, like I was doing there but uh, you just kinda wiggle it back and forth and then to insert it you just line it up and hold the locomotive uh, in place and just slide it down and uh, till it uh, pops into place. And you may notice in the photo here, in me uh, removing the stack and installing the oil, I kind of bumped the the front of the boiler, and again, it was sort of uh, popping off there. Um, but again, it real easy fix here after I shot this. Now a little bit about the actual prototype for these engines. The 2102s are also called the Santa Fe type locomotive, and that's because uh, Santa Fe actually initially approached uh, Baldwin Locomotive Works to see if they could modify some uh, 2100 engines and produce a 2102 for use as uh, helpers because they found that on Raton Pass and some of the other areas the 210s when they were backing for such a long period of time they needed a trailing truck which at that point would have then been the lead truck to help guide it uh, down the mountain and so the Baldwin went ahead and produced the uh, 210s for Santa Fe which then ended up being a uh, very popular uh, engine the Baldwin uh, 210-2s were built between uh, 1903 and 1927, with the final order being the 3800 class for the Santa Fe, which were between 1919 and 1927, and it is this run that uh, Broadway Limited has modeled. In comparing the uh, model engine to the actual prototype, I found it to be uh, extremely uh, accurate. Uh, I used uh, Jeff Ainsworth's uh, Santa Fe uh, 3800 class 2102 pictorial and was able to actually look up the uh, the specific road number of the engine I purchased and in almost every way it lines up uh, very accurately. The one difference that I was able to discern uh, from the model uh, and the photographs is the lettering of the, the word Santa Fe and the actual number on the tender are a little bit low. Uh, the rivet line on the Santa Fe should actually uh, go through the uh, just under the lower half of the letters and then the uh, the numbers should actually be lined up with that uh, middle row of rivets um, that are several scale inches above where the numbers are. One other interesting item to note on the the tender and the lettering although I didn't purchase it uh, one of the engines that BLI did was number 3851 and uh, in the pictorial uh, they've got pictures of that engine from July 1955 and it actually does not have the Santa Fe lettering on the tender it only has the number and BLI did it with both the Santa Fe lettering and the number like they did the other engines that could be perfectly accurate for a, a slightly earlier time frame um, but for ex specifically July 1955 that tender should actually just have uh, the number one thing with this engine I did want to point out is it has a, a free swinging a brass bell on uh, along the top of the boiler uh, which is really nice and uh, prototypical and all but it actually is too free swinging and so the thing vibrates and I just kind of find it distracting watching the bell bounce around uh, as the engine goes down the track. So I'm probably going to end up putting a little drop of uh, CA or, or something in there to, to keep the thing from moving. Uh, but that's just personal preference. Well, and all this is an excellent engine that is uh, very prototypically accurate and it runs very smoothly and well. It uh, sounds nice if you like HO scale uh, sound which is a bit of a uh, personal preference. Uh, but if you do like it, uh, you'll probably like this one. So with that, I'm going to end the video. And uh, keep running your trains, keep enjoying them. And we will catch you at the next time.